Hey guys, today we'll be looking at the story of the Poles, Lithuania's best friend. They are a European cavalry civilization well known for their mighty winged hussars and... Obux? Well, let's get to how it all came together. The rise to the Polish power starts with Jadwiga in the year 1384. Chosen by the Polish Szlachta, Jadwiga, the youngest daughter of a Hungarian king, was to be crowned a ruler of Poland. The journey to the place of her coronation, Krakow, is nicely depicted in the first mission of the Polish campaigns. Princess Jadwiga, Together with Prince William of Habsburg. Ever since they were born, it was decided that Jadwiga and William will marry. The agreed marriage did not sit well with the Polish nobles though. And so, after William's arrival, he was uh, removed in a shameful and offensive manner and driven from the castle. Her marriage was instead directed towards Jogaila, a Lithuanian duke. Despite not having a common language, she agreed. The 12-year-old Jadwiga and the 35-year-old duke married, uniting Poland and Lithuania and setting base for a centuries-long alliance. The Commonwealth's Golden Age dates to two centuries later, when the two countries officially united with the Union of Lublin, merging them into one. Interestingly enough, the Commonwealth was an elective monarchy, the ruler being chosen by the nobles, governing together with the Senate and the Parliament. Modeled after the warriors from Balkan and Hungary, the Hussars were originally a light cavalry unit, soldiers with minimal armor that proved highly effective in raiding and disrupting enemy supply lines. This type of cavalry was later copied by other European nations, which is something that we can regularly see in the game as well, with the uh, mass late game Hussar spam. The Poles, on the other hand, decided to go a different way and turn the Hussar into a heavy cavalry. Polish Hussars were heavily armored units and usually fought with more than just a sword. A lance, a battle axe, a set of 2 to 6 pistols, warhammer and arquebus. Those were all the weapons that the Polish Hussar can carry to battle. And their role? They served as shock troops. Their task was to charge at the enemy and decimate their ranks. This usually happened several times in quick succession charging and then returning to restock for new lances, only to charge at the enemy again until their formations broke. This turned out to be a decisive tactic in battles for nearly two centuries, uh, winning encounterments where the enemy massively outnumbered the Poles. A secret weapon of the Hussars were their horses though. They were specially bred with the Tatar horses, making them much stronger and effective. They were so valuable that it was forbidden to sell them to anyone outside of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. A crime punishable by death. One of the most important battles where the Polish Hussars proved their massive power was the Battle of Vienna. The Ottoman Empire was stretching its grasp around the Christian Europe, conquering the eternity of Balkans and parts of Wallachia and Hungary. The besieged city of Vienna called for help and the King of Poland answered. After 12 long hours of tough battle, the winged Hussars started their first charge. 18,000 Poles and Germans, the biggest cavalry charge in history. Fear and lances sliced through the Ottomans, decimating their forces. The battle was won in the next two hours. A defeat the Ottomans would never really recover from. While this truly was the peak of the Polish era, the civilization in the game represents more earlier stages of the Commonwealth. Um, the Polish campaign captures the unification of the two countries and their conflict with the Teutonic Order, who were in a religious war with Lithuania at the time. The battles escalate in the final mission, where in the Battle of Granwald, uh, the Poles finally defeat the Teutonic forces for good. You first get a small time window to prepare yourself for the battle, a reference to the nine-month truce between the two sides, as neither was really ready for the war yet. Uh, during that time, you have a chance to recruit some extra mercenaries, including the Bohemian Hussites, My men and I have come from Bohemia who were actually present in real life, which was something that would later be known as one of the greatest raids of the Hussite era. Yogaila would amass a force of multinational and multi-religious army, which would meet the Teutonic Knights in the field. And 
well, we all know how the battle ends. And so, now you know a bit more about the Polish history. But, how are they in the game? Poles are a cavalry civilization, so they obviously get some bonuses towards that. And by bonuses I mean unique technologies, of course. <laughs> Um, the first one makes their knights really cheap, and the Imperial one gives the Light Cavalry trample damage. Interestingly, both of these texts make sense in the historical sense as well. Uh, Schlachta privileges refers to the privilege of Kosice, which lifted the Polish nobles from paying tribute to the Hungarian king. And Lechitic... Legacy... Lechitic? Lechit? Lechti? I'm not sure how to use that one. <laughs> Uh, the Polish cavalry was very successfully used to decimate the enemy ranks, so trample damage only makes sense. Naturally, the Poles get winged hussars in the stable as an upgrade to the light cavalry. Their archery range and barracks are both... Uh, okay... Um, what is worth mentioning, though, is their unique unit, Obuch, uh, which is an infantry unit that tears down the armor and clothes from the enemy until they have nothing left. <laughs> this guy, a lead outside wagon with zero armor, uh, that completely defeats the purpose of that unit. And okay, that's nice and all, but how do you play them? Well, their villagers regenerate, farms around Folvark work faster, and you collect gold while mining stone. This means that you can comfortably reach Castle Age without the fear of your villagers dying. When you start placing farms, thanks to Folvark, your food supply will be plentiful, and the best part about this whole thing before even reaching Castle Age, you send a few villagers to Mindstone. Just enough stone to buy a castle. This castle allows you to get a discount on your knights, and suddenly you have one of the smoothest and most powerful late Castle Ages in the game. Overwhelming your opponent with knights or mass obuchs is quite simple at that point. And if you're not the type of a man who wants to wait till the Castle Age, I have another proposal for you. Tower Rush. Your villagers regenerate, which gives you a huge advantage in these early fights already. You will also not slow down your economy by mining stone, because gold will be trickling in as well. But that's just how I see it. What strategies were successful for you? Let me know in the comments. And as final words, their castle is the Benjin castle. Their wonder is the Wavel Cathedral or Basilica Architektralna Święty Stanislava i Święty Václava w Krakowie. I hope I did not butcher that too much. <laughs> and their church is just wrong. <laughs> they are one of the most Christian countries in Europe and Orthodox churches just have no place in there. But that's gonna be all from me. So see ya! And don't forget to subscribe.